Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode ever of BHL's Movie Hour podcast, whatever it's called. I'm still still workshopping that. Uh, a lot of questions probably going through your head right now. The main one being, how did I come up with such an incredible and original title for a podcast? To which I say, it's just the uh, the burden of being a genius coming up with such things. Also, I may or may not have stolen it from Ariel Hawani's show. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, what's happening here? Well, there are time codes down below, by the way, if you want to skip around, but first, I thought I should give a little introduction and explanation on why I'm doing this, why I'm starting a second podcast, what I'll be doing on the podcast, how this affects my other podcast, and, um, basically, the, the catalyst for everything is that I am at university now. I've just started university, or college, whatever you want to call it. Um, I am abroad, I'm away from home, I'm in a whole new world of lots of exciting opportunities and such, um, and a lot of new pressures and a lot of work, basically. (laughs) I've been in a gap year for the past year, and so I had a lot of time to work on videos, which is why I put out more stuff, did more with the podcast, did more with my channel, but now I am kind of back to a lot of work. And so making content for my YouTube channel is going to be more difficult for the next a uh, little while, I suppose. I guess it'll be harder initially because, you know, I've got so much stuff between school and meeting new people and all those kind of things. So for the next few months, especially, and then maybe it'll kind of calm down as I get more settled in, it's going to be hard for me to make content for my channel. And so I thought, what better way to, well, be able to keep it going, basically, and be able to talk about stuff than starting a second podcast where I can talk about basically what I'm going to be talking about in these podcasts is the movie news from the past little while that I'm interested in, the stuff that I've watched recently, mini reviews, some might even call it, and then at the end, going through the Reddit and making that a part of my uh, podcast instead of its own, their own individual videos, because again, I don't know if I would have the time to actually make those in their own videos. So basically just a little Q&A at the end. Basically, if you are a fan of MMA and if you watch the Weasel podcast or the Weasel YouTube channel, he has a podcast, uh, one of my favorite channels, I'm basically doing that. I'm, <laughs> I'm basically taking that formula that he does with the MMA world and putting it to the film world and combining it with segments from the Poorly Planned podcast. Now, how will this affect my other content? It won't. This will be a bonus extra thing I'm putting out because I will have time to, you know, it's easier to edit. Uh, I'll have time to do it. It's kind of, it's also a fun thing to do, but I will be working on other stuff equally as much. It's just, I won't be able to put out normal videos as often um, these days. So this is like a nice thing that I can do once a week, once every two weeks that I can just, I can keep active, I can do stuff, and I can talk, that's the thing, I want to talk about stuff, I have thoughts on all these things I watch and all this news, and I feel like I can't get it out anywhere, so, you know, this is, this, I feel like would be a great format for it, um, so yeah, I'm still planning on making, you know, proper reviews with, like, the videos and editing and everything for, you know, big movies, big shows that come out, if there's a topic I want to talk about in a video, I'll make a video for it, and I also want to make those, you know, big videos every once in a while, like the chronologies or the best and worst. I can actually reveal that I am currently working on Tony Stark's MCU journey in chronological order. Don't know when that'll be out because I've, I've recorded it all and now it's just editing it. Uh, will be a little tough, you know, with everything being so busy. But yes, so basically content will continue as it would have otherwise, which is less content than usual because I'm busy. But I'll be putting out this podcast, you know, once a week, once every two weeks in order to stay in your feed and, and talk about stuff and have fun. How will this affect the Poorly Planned podcast? It won't. It won't at all. Uh, That's still going to keep going. Still going to do that every Friday. There are new episodes every Friday. Uh, The only thing is, we'll probably talk less about news and mini reviews, but we were kind of going to have to do that anyway because of, you know, our schedules and stuff. It's going to be hard to record up to date and, you know, stay uh, consistent with doing that as, you know, when we, back in the day, when we could just record every week and then put it up the next day. You know, now we have to pre-record stuff. So, In essence, we weren't really going to be able to talk about news and mini reviews that much anyway. So this gives me another venue to do that, which is, (laughs) which is great, which because you know, I really like talking about that stuff. And, um, and of course, if there's a piece of news or a movie we've seen that we want to talk about, of course, we'll talk about it. But, you know, we'll do topics over there and here we'll just do, you know, the news, what I've watched and um, the Reddit segment, Reddit Q&A, basically. So... I think that answers everything. This is a little weird for me because, you know, I'm used to podcasting with another person, with a friend, but this will just be, yeah, if if you want to listen to the Weasel podcast, that's kind of what I'm going for. Just a chill vibe. Let's just talk about stuff. Let's just go through this stuff from the past week, two weeks, however much it is. Let's just have fun with it. So without further ado, let's get into BHL's Movie Hour, episode one. Also, actually, I said without further ado, a little more ado. 
I am going to be putting these on Spotify and Apple Podcasts if I'm able to uh, work on that. So yeah, it can just be a fun, fun thing. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so let's get into it. Let's start with the news from the past uh, little while. First of all, recently we got the Fantastic Beasts 3 title and release date. Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore for, I believe, April 15th, 2022. In terms of, I saw there was a bit of a backlash to it because people want Newt Scamander to be more, I mean, he's like supposed to be the main character of this franchise, and so people are upset that the title is about Dumbledore, which means the film will probably be more about Dumbledore. Honestly, for my two cents, I mean, I, I actually like Eddie Redmayne's performance as Newt Scamander, but I did always think the whole Dumbledore, you know, early Wizarding World lore would be the more interesting parts of this franchise. So I'm, I'm, and also Jude Law was easily my favorite part of the last film. So I'm definitely down to, uh, to explore that more. Then again, when I do think about it, I enjoyed the first Fantastic piece. I thought it was, I thought it was solid. I, it didn't blow my mind, but I thought it was pretty fun. I really was not a fan of the second one, which focused more on the Dumbledore Wizarding lore stuff. So by that pattern, maybe it's not a great thing that they're going to be still going into that. But I think if they rein it in a bit and if they make it less... Oh god, giant truck outside, cement mixer. Yeah, by the way, at my new place, you can probably hear, like, outside the window. Sorry about that. But um, if they focus it in a bit and try not to make it this exposition-y, huge lore thing, like, of course, explore the lore, but, like, doing it in a more interesting way than just everyone standing in a room yelling about, you know, a, a sinking boat and their backstories and whatever, whatever happened at the end of that that movie, then I think... I think Jude Law's Dumbledore would be fascinating to explore his origins and, uh, and you know, his journey with Grindelwald, who now be played by Mass Mugison, which is very exciting. I think he'll be, be great in the role. I'm not too excited about it, to be honest, which is shocking to me because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Um, but the, the last two movies just haven't really done it for me, especially the last one. But hey, I'll watch it because it's my channel. You know, I, I talk about this stuff, so I better. Um, and then this came out the other day. Let me just pull this up. The Mario, the Super Mario movie cast. It's a me, Chris Pratt from The Guardian. Yeah, <laughs> this is, I don't really know what to make of this, to be honest. I don't, I don't want to say it's questionable. It is, I have questions about it, I guess by definition that makes it questionable. But we did get the cast for Illumination's Super Mario animated movie, which to be honest, I mean, I wasn't, crazy excited for it, but it's kind of, it's interesting, I guess, like, if they're gonna make a, you know, a Mario movie, definitely should be animated, in my opinion. No offense to huge fans of the Bob Hoskins movie, which I'm not very familiar with, but anyway, let's look at this. Chris Pratt will be voicing Mario. Interesting choice. Um, <laughs> I see this as a bit of a Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu situation. I think it'll have that kind of vibe to it, but I, will he be doing the accent? Because, I mean, Mario has a very, you know, specific voice, so I, uh, unlike Pikachu, you know, um, I mean, he, he made that, that sound, but you know, that's not really a voice, so I don't know if he'll be doing the accent or if he'll just be sounding like Chris Pratt, but yeah, odd choice, I guess if they're going for that Detective Pikachu kind of like fun adventure movie, I get, yeah, it's just, it's just tough when you're making a, a movie based on a game with such a simple premise and, and I'd say this with all due respect, like such a simple story, they always try to make it more complicated to make it like a proper film. And they try to add, you know, more dimensions to it. And I don't know, it's, I mean, it could work, could be fun, could be kind of Wreck-It Ralph-ish, but it's also Illumination. So it probably won't be that clever. <laughs> but um, Anya Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach, sure. Charlie Day as Luigi. Yeah, the... <laughs> Again, I'm gonna assume they're not doing the accents and like doing the voice and they're just talking like themselves, but that that's just such an odd choice then for such a such characters that have such iconic voices. Um Jack Black as Bowser. Sure, okay. Keegan Michael Key as Toad, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. Genuinely this sounds like like <laughs> like a, a, a fake, you know, Tropic Thunder type thing. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, Jack Black as Bowser. I guess it's very much not going in line with, you know, what the characters already sound like and what they already are and going in a totally new direction. I just think that's an odd choice, but maybe it can pay off, you know, maybe because you got to change something to make such a kind of more simplistic plot, I guess, more movie worthy. But 
weird direction to go in, to say the least. But hey, honestly, this has gotten me more interested. I wasn't that curious about this before now, but now I'm, I genuinely want to see, a, at the very least, a trailer, you know, to see what it looks like. And then speaking of trailers, let's see, we got some trailers in the past week. First of all, I want to talk about the Last Night in Soho trailer. This was a little while ago, but uh, really bad trailer. In, not in the sense that it was particularly terribly edited or anything, but it gave away huge parts of the plot. And I guess it's my fault for watching it. I guess I, I heard afterwards that Edgar Wright said, don't watch if you don't want stuff spoiled. And I thought, well, that, that would have been good to see before I watched it, because I definitely I definitely would take back watching it if I could. I, it it kind of gave me the vibes of the World's End trailer, which fortunately I saw after I'd seen the film, where it does give away the like twist of the film. But the thing is with the World's End, I can, under, I can be more like sympathetic to a marketing team there, because you kind of have to, like... To convey what the movie is. Two thirds of the movie is this crazy robot uh, invasion thing. And so if you didn't show that in the trailer, there's not really much you can show of like what the movie is. But with this one, you didn't have to reveal and like spoilers for last night in Soho. I, I'll be vague, but like, yeah, you didn't have to reveal this thing with Matt Smith, is that his name? Doctor Who man. Um, and like all that kind of stuff, like that, totally unnecessary. No one was not going to go see the movie and they're like, oh, there's that twist in it? Oh, I'm, I'm definitely going to say it's like, no, that's completely pointless. Like, why, why would you do that? <laughs> so honestly, I'm just banking on like, and I kind of ruined it by doing this, but I'm banking on just like not thinking about it until it comes out and hopefully just forgetting that that happened. Because I watched it and that, when that happened, I was like, okay, I'm just going to try to zone out a little bit and just kind of try to keep this out of my mind. So when I see the film, at least I can be a little surprised, but don't watch that trailer. Um, however, Still looks like a great film. I'm still extremely excited for it. So that's uh, October 22nd, I believe. Then we have the trailer for Spencer, the new... Uh, oh, God. No, not not like this. Come on. I, got, I can't be forgetting, like, Princess Diana. There you go. The new Princess Diana movie starring Kristen Stewart from the director of Jackie. Uh, I'm not, like... There's so much media regarding, you know, the royal family and diana and you know all this stuff that i'm I, I, not that i think it's terrible or anything but like i'm just not it doesn't really pique my interest but this looks really good uh it looks like you know one of those oscar films and i like the way it's shot i like the the coloring yeah uh, it looks looks more interesting to me than than the other stuff like i, I started watching the crown i'll be honest I, I watched about 30 minutes of it and i just couldn't get into it i, was, <laughs> I am sorry to you see my best friend who loves the crown uh yeah just not not for me personally but anyway uh the tragedy of macbeth another fantastic looking film uh let me just actually when is this coming out i believe it's coming out on christmas actually from joel cohen of the cohen brothers i believe yeah black and white denzel washington uh i have a weird thing like favoritism for macbeth because we did that in my english class and then we went and saw the movie when it came out with uh michael fassbender so i just i remember the plot of Macbeth, so whenever I see him, I'm like, hey, I, I know that. So it looks great, too. Um, a lot of black and white movies coming out these days between, like, The Lighthouse and Passing. I believe the next Kenneth Branagh movie might be black and white as well. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so that that's the that was basically the news for this week that I was interested in, that I wanted to talk about. And then we have uh, just some things that I watched this week, which will range, again, their time codes down below, but will range from new stuff coming out to uh, just things that I've watched, you know, from... <laughs> movie history, which I think would be interesting to talk about. But let's start off with some current stuff. Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine wrapped up. They had the finale, so if you don't want spoilers, click away now. Spoilers. Bing, bing, bing. Spoiler alert. The last season of Brooklyn Nine-Nine ended, and it was a great finale. The final season in general, I thought was was solid. It was basically what I was expecting, as these sitcoms usually go. The first season's like, okay, it's setting it up. It hits its peak, like, the next few seasons, and then the last couple are kind of like winding down, not as funny, a little, you know, feel like they've fallen into a bit more of a formula. The characters aren't, you know, there aren't as many like sharp moments. I had noticed it with, you know, it's The Office, it's New Girl, and this as well. But it's still, it was still very funny. I still, I still enjoyed each episode. And the finale especially, oh, the last few episodes, the Holt and um, his husband, God, what's his name? Kevin Costner, <laughs> yes, their big triumphant kiss. That was genuinely such like a wholesome, sweet moment. And the finale, I really enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed it a lot. It had, you know, as you'd expect, a lot of fan service, a lot of resolutions uh, to various, you know, jokey plot points and serious plot points that have been set up throughout. And it was just very, very fun. It was very, very fun. And I, will, I won't even lie, the, uh, the Captain Holt, Jake final discussion 
It even, dare I say, brought a little tear to my eye, as, you know, these sitcoms tend to do. There's something about fun sitcoms, like their finales, that is weirdly emotional. And I think it's because these sitcoms for a lot of people, this is how I felt about The Office especially, are these, like, comfort shows. Like, I've watched The Office so many times, and I've watched it with, like, with friends, with family, you know, by myself when I'm going through something, by myself just when I want to have a laugh. And it's just, like... You watch it, it feels like, especially because some of them are about such regular everyday people, you know, most of them are, you feel like you know these people, and it feels, it has that feeling of like the last day of school or something when you're saying goodbye to your friends, and I don't know, I just, I think there's something really, really nice about that, you know, it makes, it makes you tear up, and when Holt says like he's proud of Jake and everything, and all the various resolutions throughout the episode, it, it did make me a little emotional, I, I really enjoyed it, so, hey, Brooklyn Nine-Nine overall, Super fun show, got given me a lot of laughs over the years. One of my favorite TV performances ever from Andy Samberg and the whole cast. I mean, it's you know it's a uh, incredible ensemble. Yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Thank you for all the memories and um, yeah, great show. If you haven't watched it, yeah, there are eight solid seasons for you to watch now. So get on that. Then uh, I did in fact watch Jungle Cruise, which is a movie I had absolutely no interest in really beyond the meme potential of uh, Dwayne Johnson being in it. And I gotta say, I kind of, I did actually quite enjoy it. Uh, (laughs) Surprisingly, I thought it was just gonna be super bland, uninteresting, whatever, which may make you ask why I watched it and I, I couldn't tell you. But once I put it on, I was sort of like, well, once I got past the absolutely hor- horrific editing in the first, like, 20 minutes, it pops up throughout the film, but the first 20 minutes especially are, like, someone just, like, literally took a pair of scissors and, like, a film reel and just, like, cut through. I was like, what is what is happening here? But once I got past that, uh, it's a fun, you know, it's it's not, like, anything crazy, but it's a fun adventure film. I've said it before, I think, I think The Rock is, like, the best movie star of the modern era, or, like, the quintessential movie star, I guess. Like, not that he has, you know incredible range or anything no offense mr rock but like he's just so charismatic and so fun to watch and even though he's always playing the same character basically i don't know i just there's a reason he's as uh, successful as he is and i i'm really enjoying being part of the the rock movie star era i guess also he gets a big old poofy wig and and costume in this one at a certain point in a flashback which made me laugh pretty hard and at the end he gets a uh, absolutely ridiculous looking outfit, um, which gave me heavy Channing Tatum at the end of Kingsman 2 vibes, where he's like in a little top hat and like, or like a bowler hat. And it's like, you do not fit this look at all. It looks like someone like literally had to like squeeze you into that, (laughs) that suit. That's the vibe that the Rock's costume at the end of this gave me. But fun film, uh, that's the thing. Like there's nothing I can think of that really stands out. I enjoyed how violent it was i guess like for this kind of movie or or how scary it was i guess like for you know for this kind of film uh, i've said it before but i appreciate that in these it's a kids movie essentially and when they have these kind of scary moments like indiana jones had and like all these other movies that i've talked about uh i think it i think it's a fun part of watching movies growing up and so i i enjoyed that that those villains they would probably creep me out uh as a kid especially the bee dude emily blunt's good too her and The Rock have pretty solid chemistry. I enjoyed the banter, you know, the the humor. I thought it was pretty funny. Again, I think it's carried by the charisma of the main main stars. It's not necessarily, like, brilliant writing. But um, it's fun. Visually, it's, you know, nothing that spectacular. Some of it looks a little... It doesn't look green screen, but it looks a little fake. Like, looks a little bit like a set. But I guess that's sort of the aesthetic of it with this ride kind of movie. Yeah, it's clearly meant to be Indiana Jones mixed with Pirates of the Caribbean. And... I think it succeeds at being pretty fun, if not a bit forgettable uh, with that. So, yeah, if you're in the mood for something that's that's kind of, you know, a fun little adventure film uh, that isn't anything that spectacular. Uh, Also, if you have kids, I don't know how many parents I've watching this, but you have kids who are maybe seven, seven to ten. I think they would enjoy it as well. So, yeah, Jungle Cruise, pretty good, I would say. Uh, From that on to a bit of a tonal shift here. Uh, I watched The Deer Hunter Best Picture winner from, I believe, 1979. One of my dad's favorite movies, so we watched it together. And, you know, I thought on BHL's Movie Hour, you know, we have the current stuff we talk about. And then also when I watch some older movies, some classic movies, we can also talk about that as well. So The Deer Hunter, it stars Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken, um, Meryl Streep's in it as well. God, wow, another cement mixer. Tremendous. (laughs) It's a powerful movie, for sure. 
It's, it, okay, I'll, I'll start with this. It's extremely long. I believe it's three hours. Uh, did not watch it in one sitting. I'll, I'll put that out there. But especially these kind of movies, I guess, were like longer in the 70s. I don't know. It's, a lot of these movies have scenes and large sections that feel like they're just building atmosphere. And on one hand, yes, it makes the movie three hours long where like you feel like not a lot happens for a bit of it. But on the other hand, I also do kind of appreciate that and I have a weird thing that I quite like about that. If you're in the mood for, like, if you, if you're just sitting down to watch something, like, casually, like, it, it can get a bit dragging on, but if you really let yourself get absorbed in it, the building of atmosphere there is really, really something quite special, I think. Like, there's a basic, basically the first hour of it is setting up these characters, and it's set at this, like, wedding, I believe, or wedding after party, something like that, and essentially nothing happens plot-wise, like, you know, little things, but nothing that big, but it just, it builds this atmosphere that's, that, that makes the rest of the film, which is so grim and, and, you know, gruesome and horrible, so much more effective, because it's brought you into this world, it's brought you in with these characters, and, and it feels real, like, you feel like it's a, it's a real world, you can really understand the, the background of these characters once they do go through, like, if it just started when they're in Vietnam, like, Obviously, obviously, it wouldn't have the same impact, but if they even cut, like, some of the stuff in the beginning, it wouldn't have the same impact. So, yeah, it can make it drag a bit, it can be a little too long at times, but I, I do appreciate the atmosphere building. And in terms of all the other stuff, yeah, super dark movie. I mean, really grim, not one to watch, like, if you're just in the mood to, to cheer up or something, but uh, very effective in uh, displaying the horrors of war and the aftermath and how it affects people, um... And like what what it does to the to the psychology of people, and some really tense scenes, very very tense scenes. Fantastic performances as well as well, especially from Robert De Niro. Yeah, just a very good film, and really impressive scale and like effects. And it's a yeah, it seems like a very big budget movie for the time. So hey, Deer Hunter, classic film. I would recommend it if you have the time and are watching it multiple parts. Uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely one if you're, you know, if you're interested in film. And if you're interested in... It's not exactly a war movie. It is a war movie, but it, it doesn't really center on the war as much as uh, other things. But yeah, I would recommend it. Then, <laughs> yeah, the tonal shift between these sections is, is kind of funny. But then we go on to Rick and Morty, which uh, wrapped up its fifth season, I believe. And I, mm, I don't know how I felt about this fifth season, to be honest. I, I like the other seasons. I, a lot, uh, especially, I would say, like, one to three, I really enjoyed, and this fifth season, it had some episodes that were very good, that I that I thoroughly enjoyed, the one that comes to mind is the Rick backstory one, where it's, like, with bird person and all that stuff, which is kind of ironic, given the complaint I'll have in a little bit, but the rest of the episodes, I just, that's the thing, I can't remember, really, anything specifically about them, except for the one, ah, oh God, what was it, turkey people or whatever, and a lot of the episodes, they just felt yeah, not the same. It felt a little bit, and I'm gonna I'm use a little MMA reference here, get ready for that, but at Conor McGregor's latest fight, when he was doing the press conference, people were saying it felt like he was doing an imitation of Conor McGregor, you know, like, it didn't feel like that naturally authentic. It felt like someone, like, doing a pretty good impression of Conor from, like, 2016, and I feel like that's how some of the episodes from this season of Rick and Morty felt. It felt like someone was doing a pretty good impression of what made Rick and Morty so special, but just it didn't have that, I don't know, that authentic feeling to it, and that kind of, like, smart feeling, I, I hate to say that because of the meme of, like, you know, 500 IQ, Rick and Morty, whatever, but, like, it genuinely, it is a very clever show, I think, for the show it is, you know, it, ha it brings up some very fun, interesting ideas that it explores in such a funny way, uh, and it just, I don't know, there's something lacking from it, especially, I believe it was the turkey episode, where it just, also, just all the jokes felt really off, they felt like, almost like jokes that the show would have made fun of before for being bad jokes in a way. I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't bad at all. Like uh, most of the episodes I enjoyed watching, but I just kind of forgot about them afterwards. And the finale, although I even enjoyed the Rick backstory episode, I think it's gone a bit heavy on like the lore and all that stuff. Cuz I'll be honest, I've genuinely tried to keep up with like the the lore of these characters and like Evil Morty and then there's they go to this dimension and they do all this, but like at a certain point it felt like it was too involved in itself, and, like, I couldn't, I didn't really get what was happening in a way. Not, like, I was completely confused, but not every viewer is, like, someone who has a ton of theories. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but, like, especially for such a mainstream show, it felt like it got very, very specific about all these different theories, and, like, this happened in this episode, and then, but do you remember that this thing happened here? And I'm like, 
you know, it can be very cool in, in small doses when you're building a lore and all that kind of stuff, and even like Easter eggs for the fans and stuff. But at a certain point, I was like, I, I don't follow all of this that closely. So I, it felt like it got very specific and it didn't have the same impact for me, I suppose. And maybe that's, you know, maybe I should follow it more closely if I want to be invested in it. But I enjoyed Rick and Morty as a show that you can just kind of put on. And it was, it was fun regardless of if you really followed the lore and all that stuff. But hey, um, I'm not saying it shouldn't have lore. I'm just saying maybe in smaller doses. But overall, the season, it was, it was solid, um, but definitely, I would say, probably the weakest season so far. Then, What If Episode 7 came out the other day. Spoilers for this episode. Um, Party Thor. I'll be doing a full review of What If, like the whole show, like a proper BHL video review at the end of it. But uh, Episode 7, it was, it was a good episode. It was a very fun episode. Um, which I guess was nice to spice it up from a lot of the depressing stuff that had been happening. Like every, I feel like four episodes before this, whatever, it was always like the villain wins, your favorite heroes die, everything's kind of grim, and it has a sad cliffhanger ending. Um, so it was kind of fun to have one that was very light, I guess. It did kind of have a bit of a feeling of none of this really matters, or you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it didn't feel like there was much stake in it, but I enjoyed it. it. It was fun. It was fun to see Thor and Captain Marvel fighting. I think that's a great thing about What If is that it gives us these opportunities to see things that we potentially couldn't see in the films, you know? Thor and Captain Marvel fighting at this point in their respective characters' journeys, it seems unlikely that they'll cross paths, especially in this way. Yeah, that was cool to see. It was a great action scene. Um, Darcy's kind of annoying, I'm not gonna lie. I usually don't really go on the bandwagon of Darcy as an irritating character in Thor 2, but in this episode, I was like, yeah, I kind of get it now. It was, <laughs> I don't know, her like one-liners and stuff just didn't really work for me, but it was a funny episode in general, I guess. Had some fun Easter eggs and cameos in there. But yeah, really, it, it felt almost too tonally different from the others. Like the others feel like they're from the MCU. This didn't feel like it was in the MCU, basically. This didn't feel like it could happen in the MCU. The others do. Like you could imagine these things happening. And this one, like with Surtur, like, you know, I mean, Surtur flirting with the Statue of Liberty and all that kind of stuff. It felt much more cartoony than the others, which was fine for this episode, but overall it felt like a thing outside of the MCU, where the others feel like this could happen if something changed in the MCU, you know? Um, but I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it overall. Let me just see if I wrote anything down for my for my actual proper BHL review. Um, well, yeah, it has the big cliffhanger ending as well, so it looks like these are all going to come together. Ultron probably won in some reality and then got the Infinity Stones, and now it's too powerful, and now the, vi uh, not the Vision, the Watcher has to bring all of the ones we've seen so far together. Sounds really cool. I didn't think they were going to do that initially. Uh, and so if they're actually going to bring all these episodes together, that'll be really fun. So yeah, good stuff. I enjoyed it. Although it's probably towards the lower end of my what if episode ranking. That being said, episode six, Killmonger and Tony Stark do whatever for an episode. That's definitely my least favorite, but <laughs> we'll talk about that. Then speaking of, uh, of another classic film I watched. I finally watched Prisoners, Denis Villeneuve's Prisoners, one of his most popular films. Uh, you know, I've been wanting to watch it for a while, and I thought with Dune coming out, I'm going to try to catch up a little more on his filmography. Excellent film, extremely dark and disturbing and uh, thought-provoking, really stuck with me for a while. Like, I still actually, it's kind of rare for a film to stay in my mind for a while, I guess, like, when I'm not even trying to think about film. Um, and this one did, there are certain moments in that that are so either horrible or poignant or shocking, and it's just, I, it had me thinking about it for a while. Yeah, dark movie, but fantastic film, like, absolutely excellent film, phenomenal performances, Hugh Jackman, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, everyone in it is excellent. It's a very interesting and dark exploration of what tragedy can do to people and what evil sort of already lies within us and what it takes to activate that like what inhumane things people end up doing in pursuit of of people they love or in anger or in in you know deep tragedy a minor spoiler i guess skip ahead if you don't know anything but the protagonist of the film the line ends up being blurred between him and being a protagonist him being an antagonist and then also the villain's motivation ties into what tragedy does to people and how it affects different people, and it kind of, yeah, explores, like, do people, like, become evil, or is that always within them, and basically how, how things can push them. The realistic, like, the realism of it really makes it stand out, I think, um, especially with the torture of the guy. <laughs> That's how, I, I, yeah, I'm trying not to spoil it, but 
the realism of that it makes it so horrible and then the way you ultimately find out the way it all falls into place and the way you ultimately find out what everything means super dark like i was hoping maybe and i mean in a way it has a happy ending i guess if you can call that a happy ending but it also has an extremely dark ending when you not even when you think about it i mean just how it happens but especially when you think more about it it just kind of gets darker and sadder and yeah uh, excellently shot too. Great pacing, great structure that folds out this mystery in a very compelling way. Super tense, extremely tense film. Some scenes I was like, one, one of those were like, you almost like want to pause it for a second because it's so tense. Uh, man, phenomenal film. Highly recommend. Very dark. Not for a day where you're like, you're already, you're already sad. Or maybe, maybe that's the best day to watch it. <laughs> but like, expect it to be a very dark film. I'll stay with you for a bit, but yeah, phenomenal film. And then, I don't know why I ended on this. Space Jam, the A New Legacy, whatever it's called. I haven't seen the first Space Jam, but I watched this because I thought, you know what, why, why not? Uh, it could be kind of, could be kind of fun to like make fun of. And yeah, it's bad. I mean, what do you want me to say? It's bad, but it wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. And I guess I say that because it still had entertainment value to it. Like it, I. I wasn't bored while watching it. I was like irritated sometimes while watching it, but at least because so much is happening and it's going at such a, you know, fast pace and there's just like colors and references and whatever. Like in that sense, it's just like a thing like that's there, you know, it's not boring, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but it's also not particularly interesting or clever or anything. I guess kids will like it. Like people saying like, I, I think you can, you can definitely criticize kids films and you know, like, proper films, because they are, and, and some kids' films are, like, incredible, just films on their own, but I think you can also say, like, yeah, it's a bad movie in general, but kids, kids, I think, would enjoy it, I think, I, yeah, I think a kid would like this, especially, like, in today's era, like, I, I, I don't want to speak on the first Space Jam, but I feel like it has a similar vibe to it, it, it yeah, people are going to come after me for saying that, okay, I haven't seen the first Space Jam, okay, I, I don't, don't hate me, but it was fine, LeBron is not a good actor, but I mean, that's not what you're expecting. Like, you're not going to this for LeBron James' epic performance. Don Cheadle was really fun. I liked him. Uh, he's just, like, chewing the scenery and having a good time with it. I enjoyed that. And all the references, yeah, I mean, it's it's dumb and not clever and it's just, like, just throwing in properties that you own. But I guess it, it was kind of interesting. Like, when I was watching, I was like, hey, like, in the very, like, blank sense of just, like, hey, I know that thing. That's, look, it's a thing I know. Like, look, it's the animated DC world cool you know like there's nothing beyond that but i guess in terms of just something flashing on the screen it's not the worst thing in the world um put that on the dvd box set um yeah i don't really have much else to say to be honest it, i didn't hate it as much as i think everyone else did i thought it was had some entertainment value to it but um don't think you need to go out of your way to watch it it's pretty whatever it also has and i'm gonna spoil this because i don't who cares it has a moment that made me laugh, the one of the few moments that made me unironically laugh, the Michael Jordan cameo, the Michael B. Jordan cameo. It was just so goofy and like dumb that it just, <laughs> I don't know, that moment made me laugh. You can look that up on YouTube, but Space Jam 2, whatever, that should, been, that should have been the subtitle. So yeah, that's what I watched this week or the past little while, and that was the news. And now we're going to go through the BHL Hudson Reddit. It's Reddit o'clock, baby. Um, as we do for a little Q&A segment here at the end. So I'm actually going to try to figure out how to do this. Should I screen record this part? Should I? I'm, I, I'm just going to do audio today, but maybe in the future, if you guys want, I can screen record it so you guys can also see. Let's, let's get into it. First of all, 229 members. I think we were below 200 the last time, right? So that's pretty incredible. So let's go top of the month. First of all, Kean, I made some fan art in honor of episode 100. Try to guess all the references. Yes, we did have pod 100. And there are tons of crazy references in this fan art. Uh, feel free to check that out. Wonderful stuff. Thank you, Kian. Um, <laughs> we have Steve Rogers jumping on the pumpkin bomb. Very good. We have Pod 100 hit... No, the podcast on the other channel hit 100,000 views. Congrats to us. That's pretty awesome. Thank you guys so much for 100,000 views. Uh, man, a lot of poorly planned stuff here. I love this. See, I told you. Available now on digital CD and vinyl, inspired by the 100th episode. Oh, boy. Oh, God. <laughs> Pod, the poorly planned podcast, Greatest Hits. I'm gonna eat your wife, Peter. Nice. He's definitely bigger. Georgia's song. 
the Tom Knuse melody, bird hand fake mustache, cump thwelms. Um, you can you can read this one. I guess I'll put a screenshot in. I'm trying not to <laughs> not to curse because then I won't have to censor it, so I can just edit it faster. So um, suck something from. Oh God! If I ever see it again, <laughs> you're you're gone. If you don't listen to the poorly planned podcast, this will be wildly confusing and extremely questionable on many levels. But um, if you do, then I think you'll really enjoy this. So yeah, we will be putting out our CD special very soon. Logan or Joker uh, from Super Watt from Super Watto. Definitely Logan. Yeah, uh, Joker's. I think Joker's a good movie. I wasn't as crazy about it as some other people, although maybe that's because I had a horrible cinema experience with it, which maybe I'll talk about some other time. But uh, I think Logan is a phenomenal film, very emotional, very well made. And I think Joker has interesting ideas in it, but I ultimately found it a bit predictable. And I I think the hype just kind of messed it up for me because everyone was talking about it like it was this crazy thing. I was like, it's, I, I don't think it's that crazy, but it's a still a good movie. It's still a good movie. A fantastic performance. Also, I sound like Mario there for a second. It's a still a good movie. I seen your pod on characters you could beat up, and I have a question. Would you beat this dog? Everyone gangster until the dog knocks someone. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with that dog could definitely kick mine and Freddy's ass simultaneously. Also, I'm not going to beat up a dog. I don't want, um, you know, John Wick to come after me. And also, look at, look at the dog. It's so cute. It's such a good boy. Once BHL gets letterboxed, he should make a video where he judges our letterboxed pages. He seemed to like it in the last Reddit vid. Yeah, sure. Um, again, I have letterboxed technically, like I've made an account. I just haven't like act or not activated, but I haven't like done anything with it yet. Uh, I was going to make a video of like my first time using letterboxd. I might still do that, but yeah, no, hundred percent. I'm working on it. Okay. I've gotten closer to making a letterboxd account as in I've set up the account literally. <laughs> Edgar Wright didn't limit his use of the tinnitus ring to Baby Driver, but actually included it in all of his films of the stylistic choice of, wait, I actually have tinnitus. Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) God, I can't believe I actually fell for that and also just read it in such a deadpan way. (laughs) I was like, oh, this is actually an interesting movie fact. I guess this is great. Good stuff. Someone needs to check up on this man. Tom Cruise did 500 hours of skydiving and 13,000 motorbike jumps over the course of a year to prepare the most dangerous stunt he's ever done. In Mission Impossible 7, he rides a motorcycle off a cliff, jumps off, and then pulls his parachute. Yeah, man, I mean, you know, we talk enough about Tom Cruise on the podcast, but, I mean, what can you say about the guy? I, I guess you just reach a point where you're so rich and you've done so much stuff that you just, you're like, screw it, I'm just going <laughs> to do death-defying stuff constantly and get paid to do it and make some entertaining stuff. On the one hand, yeah, it's super entertaining. He does it for, you know, his films. The films are great. Those stunts look better in the film for it. On the other hand, I don't know if he's just an adrenaline junkie or, like, he just, he, he I guess he loves the thrill. Uh, but, hey, I I just hope nothing goes wrong because, you know, you keep tempting fate, Cruz. <laughs> so, like, I hope they just, they strap you in safely, because, yeah, man, he does so much dangerous stuff. But yeah, good on you, Cruz, I guess. Which Warner Brothers auteur-driven blockbuster are you more excited for? Uh, Matrix 4 or Dune? Dune, for me, uh, I think it looks fascinating, and I, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of the director. The Matrix 4, I, I've seen the first Matrix. I'm planning on watching the other two before this movie comes out, although I've kind of heard that, like, they're not really that, you know, they're not as good. Like, I guess the Matrix 1 is the most important to watch, but I thought the trailer looked interesting for Matrix 4. I guess I would be more interested if I was a bigger Matrix fan. I like how um, Neo just looks like John Wick now, just <laughs> straight up. I guess that's just how Keanu Reeves looks, but yeah, no, Dune looked more, looks more interesting to me personally. Just some of my favorite shots from episode 100. <laughs> me and Freddy looking uh, a disagreeing halpert to the camera. Me and Freddy cheersing our Pepsis, no, Faxacondis, pardon me. And Freddy, yep, no, yeah, with the cardboard cutout, head of Brett. Yeah, again, if you don't watch the pod, very confusing, but um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed these, these shots. See, I told you. Then we just have a picture of John Krasinski 
as Spider-Man. <laughs> I don't know what to make of this. I like how, yeah, I was like, yeah, we'll do a little, I'll do a little Q&A thing. I guess, I guess I'll just work the Reddit into it. And then like the questions end up being John Krasinski in Spider-Man costume, but um, tremendous stuff. He looks kind of like how I feel maybe real life Peter Parker from Spider-Verse would look, maybe. That's not an insult to John Krasinski. I'm not saying he's like out of shape or anything. It's just kind of like the hair and the, you see what I'm talking about. Benedict showed this little likes to dislikes thing on the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, and I sort of found it again. Not really sure what this means. I think you mean for the little thing where I go like, if you're enjoying this video, drop a like, subscribe, and do ba da ba da I don't really know, but um, by the way, if you are enjoying this video, uh, drop a like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts on what I talk about down below. And also check out my other podcast, The Poorly Planned Podcast. It's like this one, but probably better. Um, <laughs> well, it's like this one, but probably more funny. This one's a little more just chill, more, you know, just us, just us chopping it up. And the other one is a little bit like a crazy fever dream nightmare, but check it out. Is Martin right about Marvel movies? I've talked about this sort of at length before. What do you guys think of The Dark Knight Rises? I would say great. I think it's it's not quite up there with The Dark Knight, but it's pretty, pretty damn close. BHL must rewatch Back to the Future. I've gotten a lot of comments about this. Okay, I will, I'll do it. I will rewatch Back to the Future. And you know what? I'll watch Back to the Future 2 and 3 as well. All right, it's on the list. And by the way, crazy update. I know I always say it's on the list. I've actually made a list. I have made a list. So there, I, when I say I add it to the list, I actually have a list now. How fast I work through the list, that's still up in the air, but I have a list. BHL, this is the last time I'm going to tell you this from Snoo Cauliflowers 8930. Please review the Karate Kid movies and especially review Cobra Kai. It's one of the best shows on Netflix. Action, martial arts, dramedy. The acting is great as well, and it's really funny. Well, guess what, Super Cauli Snoo Cauliflowers 8930. I've actually watched Karate Kid 1. So I've started the journey. Boom. See, when I say I'll watch something on the Reddit videos, it's not just always a complete lie. <laughs> I did watch the first one. I really liked it. I guess I'll save more thoughts for an in-depth review. But yes, I've started the journey towards being able to watch Cobra Kai because you have to watch the other movies, I assume, before watching it. So yes, I've started, and I like the first Karate Kid. If Tom Cruise was on the podcast, what would be the most likely scenario? Oh boy. Yeah, should I actually just, I think I'll save this for the Tom Knews. This will, this will be Tom Knews. Um, he would try to get Benedict and Freddy to join. He would get really angry. He'd start a fight and win, obviously. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll bring this up with Freddy, but I, I do agree all of the above. Sex Education Review Season 3 has just come out. I've seen the first season, I believe, fully. I think maybe I'm missing an episode. Um, I've always wanted to keep watching, and I just, you know, you should know by now. With movies, I'm not as bad. With shows, I'm terrible. But, um... Hey, we'll see. Has Marvel's quality peaked since Endgame? What do you guys think of the newer shows and movies? I don't think that's from also Super Watto. And the other one was from H Bax07. And the uh, and sorry, I need to start saying the names. And Person884 wrote Tom Cruise thing. I, I think they can still make better, like, or just as good stuff, better stuff in the future. I don't think like they've peaked in the sense that they'll never reach that again. But let's just, for the sake of this question, let's look at specifically what has come out since Endgame and if it has been, uh, better. So list of MCU movies. So since Endgame, we've had Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, I wouldn't say that was as good as Endgame. Black Widow, definitely not. Shang-Chi, well, okay, not as good as Endgame, but is it as good as stuff that came before Endgame? Uh, Far From Home, yeah, I would say, is, you know, above something like Ant-Man, the Wasp, and Captain Marvel. Black Widow, it feels a bit like a phase, like an earlier phase kind of movie, um, although it was still, it was still pretty good. Sha Sh I almost said Shang-Chi, except I said it for so long. Shang-Chi, well, I really enjoyed. So I would I would say that was quite good. The shows, the thing about the shows is every time, like, I watch them and I really enjoy them, and then a little bit of time passes, and I start to kind of shift towards a more negative opinion. I don't really know why. I think it's just because they some of them end kind of poorly, or maybe they don't stick with me as much, like, they're not as memorable, but WandaVision was so good for a bit. Falcon and Winter Soldier, I thought, was pretty solid throughout, but nothing spectacular. But I did really enjoy it while watching it. And Loki, too, I thought it had some spectacular standout stuff and then I just really didn't like the finale and what if started so amazing and I I really love some of the episodes and I love the premise and then a few of the episodes have been a little not as great especially episode six the Killmonger one but I'm still enjoying it but yeah I wouldn't say they've peaked um I think they can still you know keep going and find like other peaks and highs I guess but we'll, we'll see I mean so far so far I think the quality is pretty similar to how it was pre-Endgame as well, although we, I feel like we haven't gotten that really special one like Guardians or Winter Soldier or Infinity War since then, but you know, 
we still got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, Feige and Scorsese in the octagon. Who wins? Mmm, interesting. Let me let me put on my the weasel hat here. I mean, Feige has age on his side, presumably also height. Um, I don't know if they'd be in the same weight class. I say that as if I have any idea what either of them would weigh. <laughs> um, but I feel like Martin Scorsese, he has that like gritty, like he has some tricks up his sleeve. You know, he's made enough gangster movies where it's like he probably, he's probably picked up how to hit a man, you know, on the temple and just knock him out. But what am I saying? I don't know. I'm going to go with Scorsese. Whatever. Fine. No offense, Kevin Feige, I guess. <laughs> what, a, what a question. Thank you, uh, Matt JMH. Just a picture of Qui-Gon Jinn and Michael Scott fused together, I guess. Cool. Unpopular opinion. I think What If has been great, but there's one nitpick that I have, and that's that the lip syncing isn't great. I got used to it after a few minutes, but threw me off in the first few. I can kind of see what you mean. There are some times, and I hadn't really thought of this, but yeah, there are definitely some times where the way the lips move doesn't really match the words that well. I think there are some character model issues. Like, some of them are great, and then some of them, like, uh, who was it? Uh, Doctor Strange's girlfriend, who's supposed to be, um, what's her name? The, the super, Rachel McAdams. Supposed to be Rachel McAdams, and she just looks like she could be anyone, you know? Like, some of them do not look that distinctly like who they're supposed to be. But anyway, um, yeah, no, that's a, that's a valid nitpick, I guess. From GC Green, BHL in the past, you've said Ryan Gosling is your favorite actor, so I'd highly recommend you check out Santa Baby and Papyrus, two SNL skits he starred in. Both are hilarious. I've seen Papyrus, very funny. I don't think I've seen Santa Baby, so I will, uh, I'll check that out after I've, I've finished recording this. Thanks for the, thanks for the recommendation. Best superhero movie trilogy. Oh, X-Men, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Dark Knight, Spider-Man. For me, it's between Dark Knight and Captain America, because Spider-Man 1 and 2 are great, especially 2, and 3 I don't think is terrible, but it's, you know, it's not up to par of the others. The Dark Knight, I think all three are fantastic. X-Men 1 and 2 are great, especially 2. 3, not a fan, so I kind of got to rule that one out. Captain America, huge fan of uh, all of them. Iron Man, I'm actually a really big fan of all of them as well. I know people don't really like 2 and 3, but I really like 3, and I think 2 is actually good. And Thor... I'm um, pretty indifferent to the first two. I think they're okay, but I haven't watched them in forever. And the third one's great. I'm gonna go with the one I would rather probably watch, like just like sitting down just casually. I mean, you can't really casually watch like three movies in a row. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that, but that's not to say it's a bad thing. I feel like I just offend offended all the marathoners out there, but um, for me, I can't like sit down and watch three movies in a row. It's very hard for me. It's, yeah. Anyway, I've talked about that before. I'm terrible at binge watching stuff, but just to sit down casually, Captain America or Iron Man, uh, but overall, like, quality, I guess the, the Dark Knight trilogy, but it's, it's close. Thoughts on this video, BHL? Personally, he's changed my mind. Yes, it is Donkey's Endgame video. Tremendous stuff there. I do, no, I have seen this video. It is, uh, it's very eye-opening, actually. I think I should reconsider my entire thoughts on the MCU, really. 150th episode of the pod. BHL should karaoke Radar Love by Golden Earring. Ah. <laughs> I don't want to say I'm the worst singer of all time, but I'm probably in like the top, top four. But you know what? Who? Sure. Why not? If you remind me before the 150th episode, then yes, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Why not? Who's winning the arm wrestling match? What the? <laughs> what the actual hell? How did Freddy get more votes? Well, I'm, I'm glad I've been vindicated since the, the video came out. How the, how dare all of you? Is it just because he's taller than me? Come on. Height doesn't have anything to do with an arm wrestling match. Wow. I didn't expect to be genuinely offended by this. <laughs> well, uh, everyone who voted for Frederick, um, shame on you. <laughs> God. Well, anyway, what a horrible way to end it. So, that's the, that's the end of the BHL Movie Hour, episode one. So, yeah, just to wrap up, this is a way for me to talk about stuff in the movie world, stuff I've watched, news, and answer your questions and react to stuff you post on my Reddit. That's r slash BHL Hudson, by the way, if you want to post something. I won't be able to post as much content frequently, although, I'm, again, this is not replacing anything. I'm still going to make content as frequently as I'm able to while at university here. And the Poorly Planned podcast is still going. But again, also, yeah, on that podcast, we haven't really been able to do the news and mini reviews properly for a while. Like, we have episodes occasionally, and we'll still talk about stuff that comes up that we're interested in. But this gives me a chance to, to talk about stuff that I, I really want to talk about when maybe we can on the pod. And But yeah, the pod will still keep going. Everything's all good. So yeah, 
That's the BHL Movie Hour, episode one. So thank you very much for watching and or listening. This is the first time I'm trying this. I'm trying this just off the off the top of the head. So there will be little things that I iron out as I go, but I hope you enjoyed. I'm trying to do this every week, every two weeks, who knows? But, you know, something kind of frequently because it's it should be much easier and quicker to make. And yeah, I'll try to get it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. But in the meantime, be sure to like this video. Check out my Instagram and Twitter at BHL underscore Hudson. Check out the other podcast that I have called the Poorly Planned Podcast, where we talk about movies and TV shows and a bunch of nonsense. It's great. I do it with a friend of mine. And subscribe for more videos and podcasts, I guess, like the one you just watched slash listened to. I really got to figure this out. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.